What's up YouTube? So today's video might seem a little bit obscure at first, but just bear with me for a little moment while I show you the proof of concept because I'm pretty sure there's some Bitwig users out there that will definitely benefit from this little technique that I've figured out. So anyway, this is the proof of concept. So basically my idea is that, you know, with Bitwig, say for example, if we want to randomize certain things within the patch, we could either have, you know, like a random LFO that's constantly randomizing stuff, or we could, for example, randomize certain values within the patch. So some plugins, like I know the Kilohot stuff has kind of pre-baked, preset randomization stuff built into each of the snap-in effects. So you can just press the button and it, and it basically just randomly assigns a value to each of the parameters. Unfortunately, in Bitwig, we don't really have something like that, um, it's, except if you use something like the DICE or the Sample and Hold LFO but set this parameter all the way to the left. And essentially what that's doing is it's just creating a stepped value each time it receives a input. So as you can see here, each time we switch the button up, it's generating new values over here. So this is really cool. However, if we save this project and jump back into it, these values will be different. They'll either initialize, as in the case with the dice, or the case with the sample and hold LFO, it will generate a new value every time. So let me just show you what I'm talking about real quick. I'm gonna punch this value in here into this little comment section. So even if we save this, save preset, okay, um, and we delete it and we add another one, like I said, these values are going to be different. Like you can see here, this is no longer a 154 and this is no longer 935. So if these were assigned to particular sound parameters in a patch, the patch would be completely different each time we load the thing. It's also apparent if we just drag this onto a new channel, new values. So it's been a bit of an issue, you know, um, that I've been trying to solve for a little while. You know, how can we get some kind of randomization system that can apply um, an array of values, but we can randomize, but it saves within the patch. So that's how I came up with this. So at the moment, it's not assigned to any sound type of stuff. So you're not gonna hear any kind of differences, but pay attention to these values over here. The essential idea is we're using the randomization system of the steps module. And what this does is it basically has eight steps assigned to it. And each of the steps is randomizing a value when we use this dice parameter, right? And then basically I've set up a system which can capture those values and then send them to certain parameters in the synth. So I've assigned a thing here called write. What that does is it basically just allows modulation through. For example, we can turn it off, or we can randomize the values some more, and then these values are stuck to the patch. So these values aren't actually gonna save, but it's these values which are gonna save. So notice here, uh, pay attention to these values. I'm not actually gonna write them down, but we're gonna, um, we can see in the edit of the video anyway. 0764, 0625, 0959. Okay, so let's save preset to library. And when we open it up again, you'll notice that those values are the same. So essentially I've created an 8-bit memory module for modulations within the grid. So now I wanna show you why I think this is so cool and actually how I stumbled upon this. So I've kind of been trying to figure this out for a little while, but I didn't figure out, I didn't figure it out by trying to make this. I was actually trying to make something else, um, but I'll explain that a little bit later on in the video. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna quickly show you how you can create this 8-bit memory module for your grid patches. And as you can see here, what I've done is I basically saved it as a preset. So I can just load it up and start building a patch here, then save it as a different preset, if that, if that makes sense. Or we could just copy this entire system and just paste it inside another module. Does that make sense? So we could do this in an effects grid if we wanted to randomize parameters of effects and that kind of stuff. Um, we could just paste this here um, and then the entire system is already made for us. We can just send these modulators to any parameters in the setup. And notice here when we copy paste it, these values still stick. Like it, no matter what we do within the grid, because this step system actually saves the values, 
um, within the preset, uh, the entire system is built around this. And because you can actually randomize these values, that's what makes this whole system work. So I'm pretty sure this random setting wasn't available in Bitwig 4. It's only something that's been available in the Bitwig 5 beta, and obviously it's going to um, be available in Bitwig 5. So for those Bitwig 4 users, unfortunately, you're not going to be able to do this, I think, but maybe you want to correct me um, if I'm wrong in the comments. So anyway, um, I want to show you quickly how to create this. So now I want to show you how to create this uh, memory module inside the grid. So like I said, the essentials are the steps module. And the idea is we're going to clock this phase of this thing uh, manually. So we want to turn this parameter off over here. And as you can see, it's kind of sticking onto a single parameter. What could be cool is if the step count could be set to one, because then each of these could be its own little random modulator. That being said, I kind of like the idea of an array you know, like various parameters that we can randomize all at once. Boom, new preset, boom, new preset. And once we've built this, I wanna show you some uh, kind of sound examples of why I think this idea is so cool. So anyway, like I said, we're going to clock this. And essentially this is gonna kind of act like a, a CPU speed for lack of a better explanation. Because what we're doing here is we're basically scrubbing through these values very, very quickly, 32 cycles per second, right? And then what we want to do is we want to set up a thing called the split. And it's this split, not the purple split, which is the phase version. We want the red splits. And we want to set this to nearest and not linear. So the difference between these is not linear. It interpolates between the values, where nearest basically switches between the values and we want eight values over here. So if we set this to scrub through these values at the same rate over here, and if there's eight steps and eight switches, what happens is it actually just sends each of these values through to, uh, let's say for example, um, I'm gonna put in some value readouts so we can actually see what's going on over here. <clears throat> but now the problem is it's constantly reading that value. You see, so it's these numbers are always changing. We want to create a system which is going to grab a sample of the value and hold it until the next cycle. In fact, just to be a bit more clear as to what's going on, we can make this just very slow. So you can see it's basically just jumping through these, uh, these values like this. So because it's constantly reading, all of these are gonna be zero while the one that it's actually reading is gonna have an output. So we can actually fix that. Uh, I'm going to zoom out a little bit. Uh, we can fix that using the sample and hold module. And what we want to do is we want to drop one of these onto each of these outputs, like this, boom, move them along a little bit like this. So each output basically gets a sample and hold. And then we need to sequentially trigger these sample and holds at the same, basically at the clock rate, which we've set up here with the clock. Um, and so, okay, now we can see each of these values basically stays zero because none of the sample and hold modules are actually receiving a trigger. So what we wanna do here is we wanna duplicate this splits, right? And instead of sending it the input from this steps, we want to send it either a constant value. Uh, so we can use either constant of one. And then what that does is it basically just sends that one to each of these outputs sequentially. And what that does is it basically grabs the value and then holds it. As you can see, it's basically scrubbed through and now it's holding these values here, right? So if we just plug these into all of these uh, triggers, we should have created the system. Let's just check these values. Okay, cool, we've done it. So now it's reading the values. Of course, the clock speed is very slow. So it's update rate is going to be affected. Uh, we can fix that by just turning up this clock again over here. So let's just turn that up to max speed. So now let's have a look at these eight values when we pop this window open and we just randomize over here. Boom, and it's randomized all the values. Boom, and it's randomized all the values. Do you see that? So if you wanna create a system which you can choose when it reads and writes, all you need to do is instead of having a constant value over here, you just switch that over for a button. 
And in Bitwig, this is something really cool, is if you want to change a module for something else, you just drag it on top. And now it's changed this over for a button. So now it's done the thing where we can randomize it here and it doesn't actually change the values until we hit right. And now we can change this module to right. Okay, so now onto the next step is to actually create a sound example here. So we could just root each of these two stuff in the patch, but I think that becomes a little bit tedious. We want to have modulators. So each of these outputs can basically have a modulator assigned to it as well as the value. So if we just drag this modulator onto the sample and hold output like this, it's going to double that up for us, which is pretty cool. It kind of knows not to replace because there's no output on the modulator module. Does that make sense? So it's very intuitive for these kind of modular ideas to create them very quickly or to kind of sketch these ideas out before you try maybe create it in something like hardware or another type of modular system. Okay, so that's about it. Let's create a sound example over here. So I wanna play with the idea of maybe having uh, two wavetable modules and we can maybe mix between those. So uh, let's use a blend and then we can basically just blend between these, uh, or crossfade between these two modules over here. Maybe we can have another oscillator uh, that's maybe just like a sine and then we can use this to modulate the phase of this rather. Okay, cool, we got a bunch of parameters here. So what we can do now is we can just send these modulators to random stuff within the patch. So let's say for example, the first one we send to this kind of phase modulation amount, but then I actually wanna turn it down. So kind of like we have a large range to work with, right? Up like this. Second one, let's send to like the skew. And so basically we're just like assigning this to a bunch of values in the patch. And then we're just going to randomize until we get a good patch, which we can then save. And then keep randomizing until we kind of have a bank of sounds to work with. <laughs> Okay, so we've got the patch. So now what we can do is we can just play with random values here and it will just assign us a bunch of random values to parameters in the patch. So is right on? Yeah, cool. So let's just go like this a few times and play around. <laughs>
Okay, so how I came up with this idea was actually I wanted to create some way of quickly switching up presets like by just dragging the bars here. So the idea was like, I wanted to have control over eight of the values with this really cool bars interface. So not only is this a nice way to quickly randomize presets, but this is a nice way to actually create presets by just quickly dragging these values. Super quick and super intuitive if you kind of know what each of these values is assigned to. Do you know what I mean? Cool. Anyway, that's about it. Hope you guys enjoyed that. I'm going to be uploading just the memory module, not this kind of sound module, just the memory module I'm going to be uploading to my Patreon for my $5 supporters. So if you want to know what that's all about, check out the link in the description. The reason I'm not going to be uploading this preset is I'm kind of not too happy with the sound, but I feel like the concept is still really, really cool. So anyway, if you guys like that, please consider subscribing to my channel if you haven't yet and hitting that like button. I'll see you guys next time. Cheers.